Hi everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. I've been making a lot of strapless dresses lately like this one you're going to see right here uh, and this one's from Gertie and I've also done a couple that have really wide necklines that don't, don't allow me to wear a typical strapped bra and so I thought I would delve back into the orange lingerie esplanade bra as an alternative strapless bra. Since, since so many of you have asked for a tutorial of this I thought I would also film one as I go along. So for this bra right here, you can see it has a nice long band and that's gonna help give you your structure and support and hold everything up since you don't have any straps to keep it up. So when we're measuring for this bra, you wanna take your tape measure and you wanna measure around your rib cage. So right where your typical wire line would be. And you wanna make sure that your measuring tape is parallel to the floor all the way around. And if that number is odd, you wanna add three inches, and if it's even, you wanna add four. So in my case, I measured 33 inches around my rib cage, and so what I'm gonna make is a 36. And the reason I'm choosing a 36 instead of a 38, which is what I normally make in orange lingerie, is because a third, I just want to make sure that I have a lot of support in the band itself. So if it's tighter, that's definitely gonna make sure to keep everything up and keep everything from sliding downwards. The next two measurements you're going to need to do is for determining your cup size. You want to do your upper bust measurements. So you want to go underneath your arms and then up and over your bust tissue. And then you're going to do a full bust measurement. So just like in dressmaking, that's around the fullest portion of your bust. And the difference between those two numbers is what's going to determine your cup size. If the difference is one inch, you're going to make an A. If it's two inches, you're going to make a B. If it's three inches, you're going to make a C and so forth. So for, I've chosen to make a 36B. Now I will tell you, I put this on and the cups are a little bit generous on me. Uh, nothing that I can't fill out with a little bit of added extra tissue, but um, uh, I did find the cups being a little bit big. So I think the next time I make this, I might make a 36A. So now that we know what size you wanna make, let's sit down on the floor and look at all the individual pieces that go into making this bra. Okay, so here we have all of the pieces that we'll be needing for the Esplanade bra. You can see that like if you've watched any of my other tutorials, the pieces are still very similar. We have a three-piece cup up here, we have our center bridge, our two frame pieces, and then of course our back band pieces. The only real big difference is just that these, where they normally would end about here, they're just extended a little bit longer. So I've cut everything out twice. I've got everything that is on this mat I've cut out twice, so I have this really pretty like pistachio mint uh, fashion fabric. And so that's gonna be the whole cups and then the front of the bra. And then for the bridge and frame, I've also cut it out of a non-stretch cup lining. Um, this is gonna be really durable and give us the strength and stability it needs. Technically, we should be using a non-stretch fabric for our fashion fabric, but I just really liked this one and I wanted to try it out. So this has stretch in one direction and I have made that stretch going vertically. Uh, if you watch some of my other tutorials, you know that typically you would want your stretch running horizontally, so left to right, around your body. But because I don't want to get any weird wrinkling and pulling in this fabric, I put my stretch vertically on here so that when this is under tension, you shouldn't see too much of that wrinkling. Um, if you had put it this way, you would definitely see much more of that as the outer fabric is trying to fight against the, the stable fabric. So we have those three frame pieces done in fashion and bra cup lining. And then for all of our cut pieces, I've cut them again in fashion fabric and foam. So I would recommend using cut and sew foam. This right here I've used is called spacer foam and I purchased it from Spandex World. Uh, it's really, really thin, uh, much thinner than, than cut and sew foam. So I don't know that it was something I would necessarily recommend, but I thought I would try it out to see how it works. Uh, so this, this spacer foam should still work just like cut and sew foam, but like I said, it's a lot thinner. It won't provide as much structure and it definitely won't provide any padding. It's, it's just there to really give a more smoothed out structure. Now this pattern does provide separate pieces for your foam and your fashion fabric. So if you look here, this is the fabric pattern piece and this is the foam and the, the main difference between the two is that you're going to have most of your seam allowances removed on your foam piece. The only seam allowances that should be remaining are the ones that are going to sit along your wire line. So make sure that you keep those two straight. 
And then for the back band, I've only cut this in a single fabric, and that is my power net. So I just have white power net here. This is a fairly sturdy one. This one I also purchased from Spandex World. Actually, I think all of these materials came from Spandex World. So the, the power net, the stretch satin, and the spacer foam. So I'll be sure to link them in the description below. It's not some place that I typically go to buy for bra making materials, but I just thought I would try it out. And so far I've been pretty happy with the stuff that I've purchased from there. So in addition to all of these fabric pieces, we're also going to need our findings. The first up I have is underwire channeling. I'm using the plush stuff. It's my favorite. It's a tube. It's sturdy. It's where your underwire goes into. And for my wire size, which is a 40, I'm going to need about a half of a yard. Then we're gonna need under band elastic. So this is what's gonna go around the bottom, close to your waist. Uh, this one here is three quarters of an inch. Though I think the pattern calls, let's see. If you don't know what size elastic your pattern needs, you can really just check the pattern yourself and you can see that they have seam lines drawn in on there. And if you, if you measure this, that will tell you how much width they expect the elastic to be. And in this case, yep. I'm, back. I'm using the right elastic for the for the width that's added onto your pattern piece. Now, if you find that your elastic is different than what your pattern has called for, it's really, really easy to either lengthen it if you have thicker elastic or shorten this just a little bit if you have thinner elastic. Then we're going to need a slightly thinner one, and this is going to go um, just on the upper arms, but it doesn't really extend into the cup at all. I'm probably only, only going to need maybe half of a yard of this, but I bought this in bulk. So I'm just going to, to work off of this big, big pile of elastic and just use what I need and then put the rest away. That way I'm not wasting any. Um, so I would not recommend, like if you buy your elastics in bulk like this, I wouldn't recommend like cutting them up into one yard pieces because then you're just going to waste them down the road. I would just use a little bit as you need it and then save whatever's left over. So we have overband, underband, and underwire channeling. Normally you would also see some strapping elastic in here but because this is a strapless bra, we're not gonna be using any strap elastic and we also don't need rings and sliders. So then the last notion that we have here is hook and eye tape. Now again, this is a really long piece of hook and eye tape. I purchased this from Bra Builders and they sell the hook and eye tape like this by the hook and eye. So each, each row of this is 25 cents, so 25, 50, 75, a dollar, that, that much was a dollar, and two dollars, three dollars, so forth like that. Uh, so I, again, buy this in bulk, so buy a really long one. I'm not gonna need this whole thing, but I would rather just keep it intact and then cut it down when I figure out how much I need, that way I'm not wasting any of the leftovers. And last but not least, we have underwires. There is a chart included in the pattern that tells you which underwire is suggested for a size, but if you have an underwire that fits you, Perfectly, I would suggest using the underwire that fits you and modifying the pattern to fit it. So now that we've gotten all of our materials, we can get over to the machine. So a few notes about setting up the machine. I want you guys to use a polyester thread. So for my project here, I'm using this Guterman Mara 100 thread. Um, it's better to use a synthetic thread just because it has a lot more strength and durability, especially on those seams that are under tension. So always use a, a synthetic thread over something like a silk or a cotton. And then I'm also going to be using a walking foot on my machine. So I have a Bernina 350 and this one doesn't include any sort of stitch regulation or something like that. So I use this walking foot as the way to make sure that my top fabric and my bottom fabric are moving at the same time through the feed dogs. And then for needles, I'll be using the Schmetz Microtex needles, and I use these in the size 130705HM. So these are the ones that I use most frequently, so I just have a bulk supply of them. I think this one came with about 100 needles for $60, which is kind of expensive, but I know that I will never run out of needles. So first I'm going to start out with my frame pieces, and I want to get all six of them up here, the lighting and the fashion fabric. And... I want to start with my bridge and I'm going to lay the fashion fabric right side up and then put my cup lining next to it and we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch at a straight stitch just along that little edge at the top. Okay, so now we've done that and then we can just flip the lining over to the inside. 
If you're having a lot of trouble, you can understitch it again on the cup lining side. Just understitch about an eighth of an inch there. That might help you get this to turn over nicely. And actually, yeah, I think I'm going to have to go do some understitching. Okay, so here we can see what it looks like with that little bit of understitching. And that might help just to make sure that you don't have any of that lining peeking over the top edge. So the next step we're going to do is to attach our frame to the center bridge. And if you've watched my channel before, this should come as no surprise that I'm going to do the stitch and flip method to cover up my seam allowances. So on the fashion side fabric of the bridge, I want to also put my fashion fabric right sides together. And just pin that into place. Then we're going to flip that over. So we have the cup uh, or the lining side facing up and I'm going to put my lining touching the lining. So you should now have four pieces of fabric and it should go fashion, fashion, lining, lining, and you're going to have a frame, then your two bridge pieces and then another frame. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that at a quarter of an inch with a straight stitch and also repeat that same process on the other side of the bridge. And this is what it should look like, again, with that straight stitch on each side. So now we can begin to open it out. So we can open out our fashion fabric in the front and our lining fabric in the back. Now we're just going to go and do some top stitching to keep those seam allowances pinned or, or tacked down and to give it a little bit flatter of appearance. So all of my excess fabric is going to be along the outer side of that seam. So what I'm going to do is sew, you know, with a scant, probably like eighth of an inch, just to the outside of that seam so that everything is flattened down. So once you do your top stitching, it should look something like this. So I'm going to do what is the burrito method if you're used to like sewing yolks on shirts. So I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to roll all of, all of this up over here until I get to this side seam. And then I am going to spread that apart. So the bulk of the, ball, the bra is rolled on the right side and we have our fashion fabric with the right side facing up and our cup lining. So what I'm gonna do is align my back piece on here and, and pin that into place. And then I want to make sure that I'm rolling this up as well because I don't want it to get in the way. And I'm going to take my lining piece and it's going to go all the way around all of that fabric. So it should all be inside of there rolled up like a burrito. And I want to match my lining up to that straight side as well. So this should be a sandwich that has the fashion fabric facing right side up, then the power net, and then your cup lining. So I'm going to take this over to the machine and you're sew it with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch along that pinned edge. Okay, so once you've sewn it up, it should look a little something like this. And then all you have to do is pull everything out of your tube. This should be fairly easy to do because we're working with really large pieces here. And that's what it's going to look like. So we're also going to top stitch this down just like we did over here, but first I went to attach my back band on this side. So let's remember how we do it. I put this to the side with the band, the part that I want to sew to away from me. Now I'm going to roll everything up until I get to that seam. Then we want to butterfly it open and pin our back band piece to the right side of your fashion fabric. And then finally we want to roll our this band out of the way and then bring our lining up and around all of our fabric to meet that straight edge and pin it into place. Then just like we did for the other side, we're going to sew this pinned edge with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch. 
And again, this is what it looks like when it's sewn up. And just like the other side, you just need to pull everything back out to the right side. And you should have your back band now encased between your lining and your fashion fabric. So just like we did with these two side seams in the bridge, we're going to go ahead and sew these down. In this case, all of the bulk of our seam allowances is towards the inside of the bra. So I am, again, going to sew with a scant eighth of an inch close to that seam that we've already made on the side where the bulk of our seam allowances is. So what I mean is that there's this, there's just a single layer of fabric here and then of course on this side we have four layers of fabric. So that's what we want to sew down is those four layers of fabric and we're going to do that for both sides. So once we top stitch it should look something like this. That concludes day one of this bra tutorial. Come back tomorrow and we'll start putting together the cups. Mm -hmm.